not a bad way to practice. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I had to make up for uh, for Friday, man. It was a. Uh, I had to get something. I had to get my, my hands on some balls at least today. But I mean, so you're obviously kicking yourself a little bit for Friday, but still, I mean, making a nice play. What do you see on that play? In the game? Uh, really, man. I just knew that we was in, in the eyes coverage and the cover two. Um, I seen my progressions and I seen him kind of staring at the receivers. So I just kind of took my opportunity and I broke on the ball. Uh, you know, it was a good play. It was an okay play, but it could have been a great play. You know, just ending the game with a pick and then, you know, going down, it could have been a pick six. So, you know, I'm just trying to brush, brush it off and just kind of learn from my experience. How so. different is that than, sorry, John, than, than college when, I mean, you're jumping in from camp and then you're playing, what, 60, 70 snaps, where yeah. I think, I don't know, maybe you were somewhere around the 6 to 10 range. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's a different experience, man. It's really like like you said, it's fast paced. Like you got three two weeks to learn the whole playbook, and then you got to go out there and perform to your best ability. So like, it's different than college, but I like it. There's more uh, of an expectation. You know, people hold you to a higher standard. You're a professional at this point, so you know there is no uh, carrying your hand. You know, you kind of out there in the fire, and I feel like that either bust pipes or make diamonds. You know that pressure. So yes, sir. Man, I've watched it every single day. Uh, you know, my best friends called me on my phone like, man, you dropping money on the ground. And, you know, just like you don't like money, you don't want to get paid. And, you know, I, I ain't going to lie to you, man. After that game, I was beating myself up bad. And people just kept coming to me like, man, you made two great plays back to back. And, you know, just to me, just like I'm a perfectionist, the kind of competitor that, that I am. So I'm going to keep beating me up. It's going to keep beating me up until I get my, my first pick in the NFL. So I, I saw after you made the pick here today at the practice, you took a moment just to kind of like reflect and enjoy the moment. What was going through your mind in that moment? And then what did it mean to you to see all the teammates come over and you know, pick you up and congratulate? Man, first thing it was I caught the ball. Like that was, only, that was the first thing that went through my head. It was like, okay, you got it in your hands. And then I was trying to think to myself, all right, what's the situation? And we were up in the, uh, in practice, so I was like, all right, just take this knee. But I really wanted to just run it out. But at the end of the day, man, I was just glad, you know, to get the opportunity. Coach Glenn and Coach AP uh, believe in me, and I feel like I just got to take that with a grain of salt, put that on my shoulders, and keep stacking these days. Like you had a little help taking the knee too. Yeah, no, definitely. They, I didn't knee it. They pushed me down. So it was, uh, it was more like, man, you're gonna get in on this knee regardless. So it wasn't my option. A couple weeks in, what's your big takeaway of the camp and the transition? It's hard. It is, man. This this NFL to be a professional is very difficult. But at the end of the day, like I said, man, either break, it breaks pipes or it makes diamonds. And I feel like. The days that I've stacked and the, the players that I've been with and the coaches that I have, I've been stacking my days, and I'm just ready to go out there and compete against the coach this week. I assume you had that on your arm before. Huh. Like that, that, that line, is that Man, just fitting? Yeah, no, definitely. I had a, I had got the line because a couple of my a couple of the females in my family are Leos, so I had to get that. But, hey, I can say I was because I knew I was going to be a lion anyway, so it can go both ways. It works. And I don't know. I, I was a little far away. I don't know if it's. Uh, a little boy, a little girl, is that your son, daughter? No, nah, no, nah, that's not my, that's uh, Tracy's son. But, you know, I, he's, he can't, he comes around a lot, sees a lot of uh, uh, our faces and, you know, very familiar with us. So, you know, I love being around kids, man, especially my teammates' kids. It's, it's feeling like a fi family environment. What's your confidence level in the playbook and how well you? <laughs> oh, man, my confidence is through the roof, especially with the playbook. Uh, you know, every day I go home or I go back to the hotel and just go through my plays, man, go through the iPad and go through the uh, installs and, I think that AG and AP are very, you know, happy with me, and uh, they're excited for what I can bring to the table. And uh, I know I just tell them every time, like I'm only gonna mess up once. After you tell me that that first time, I'm not gonna forget it. So I feel like I'm very confident with it, comfortable too. Is that sort of, I mean, you know, a senior guy in college, I think five, five years, right? Yeah, you know, six years. Six years. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, you know, just that football knowledge. Definitely, I have to give credit to where credit is due, man. Uh, Antonio Pierce, uh, Marvin Lewis, and uh, Herm Edwards, they. They're NFL guys for 20 plus years, so I was just learning from them, and I actually was got some really good good role models in front of me, and then you know I kind of just took it from there. And my expectations and, and, and the way I carried myself is to a high a high standard, a high level, and I just kind of carried that to Detroit, and I feel like it's working for me very well. Any of the vets here, particularly taking you under their wing, or you <laughs> sort of started to follow, if you will? Um, uh, all of them, all of them. I feel like a lot of all these players, they got different things that they're good at and some things that they have faults at. And I feel like with all of them, they're so supportive of me and, and how I am as a player. And how, they kind of just kind of welcomed me in and into the room. And I felt very comfortable, bro. And I really love all the guys that I got in here with me. And uh, there's not a specific person, but I just know I'm thankful for all of them, you know, because they've, they've done showed me the ropes and they're kind of just bringing me along with them. And it's, it's been a real easy transition.
Are you getting more reps at corner or safety? Uh, <laughs> everywhere, man. I've been going from nickel to safety to corner and just a whole bunch of everywhere. It really goes back to me knowing the playbook, man, and just not messing up as much. And I feel like the, the coaches trust me in those positions, and I feel like they're comfortable enough with me throwing, throwing me out on the field. So, like I said, man, I'm excited to see what goes on this week. Hopefully get a few more snaps. In oh, man, hey, I'm up there every day in the coach's office like, hey, coach, what's the game plan? Like, But at the end of the day, man, it's always team before me, and, you know, whatever they need from me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to execute at the highest ability. Good, how are you? What a difference a year makes. You're really kind of fighting for a roster spot, just kind of finding, trying to find your way in the NFL to now having a year under your belt and all the season under your belt. Just how big is the difference? Uh, just reps, getting the getting the reps in every day, trying to get better. Um, you know, it's still a fight. It's still the hunger is still there. Just chasing the same thing, trying to get better every day and control the controllable. What did having game film and having the success that you had last year, when you got your opportunity to play, how did that help prepare you in the offseason? Have actually something. Uh, just find little things to get better at, the details. I mean, you can get better in every situation trying to find uh, the little things, you know, deuce harps on it, you know, focus on the details and getting better, and then just using that and just taking the next step, you know, that's that's the biggest thing. What is that, that next step for you? Uh, just get better, whether it's on running back, special teams, um, and like I said, it's, it's redundant, but just the details of the game, you know, that's what separates people. Um, and, you know, like I said, every day coming out here in practice and just trying to build on, you know, it's training camp, it's an everyday grind. So just trying to build day in and day out and staying consistent. There must be some of the things that you've got a year to be in everything is important. Is that some sort of advantage to your first game? Oh, uh, yeah, you know, I'm still the same. Well, you've been there. Yeah. Yeah, having the staff back and, you know, just, just trying to get better as a unit and a group. Um, yeah, it's definitely an advantage, and it feels good. Uh, you know, prior, you know, in my career, we're bouncing around and stuff. But like I said, man, just trying to fight, stay hungry, you know, and battle day in and day out and compete. Have you been through joint practices before? No, this is my first one. What do you expect to get out of that? What's, what's the value of practicing against the different teams? Competition, baby. It's going to be competitive. It's going to be fun. Uh, you know, going up against somebody else for what, you know, three days, two practices and a preseason game. So it should be fun. You know, I know they're ready, we're ready, and it's just going to be a battle out there. I know you don't go against him, but Jonathan Taylor just as a running back. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, he's a great talent. Um, he's from out we're, uh, in New Jersey. I'm from um, outside of Philadelphia. So, you know, we've talked uh, out in Atlantic City for an award show, and, you know, he, I had some teammates from Kutztown that went to his high school. So mutual friends we have and yeah he's a great talent a great running back um, and you know it'll be good to see him firsthand you know compete and go out there and practice and it'll be fun. Is that train together or anything like that? No. Anybody else? You, just one other thing guys you know I don't sort of looks at this roster as Swift and Jamal number three spot up for grabs but you're, you're getting a lot of run you know in that battle for right now do you feel like that's your job to lose how do you sort of view the battle for a roster spot. Just fighting and competing every day. We're all competitors in that room. Uh, we compete, it doesn't matter what it is. I mean, you guys see the little bag drills that we do. It's every day is a competition and we're just looking to get better and I'm just trying to control what I can. You know, be where my feet are um, and let the chips fall where they may, let God do the rest. But yeah, I'm just trying to go out here and get better every day. That's the main, main thing. Good, how are y'all? Yeah, definitely. That was a huge deal um, for me going into this year. Um, you know, when you come in as a rookie, you have all these nerves, first time doing a lot of things, but this year I've been through it and out on the field the other night, just so much more comfortable and uh, just so much more self-aware. And uh, I think that helps you out a lot when it comes to play speed and getting in there and getting going. Is there a part of your game that you feel like has taken a bigger step? I think uh, overall, just my technique's gotten a lot better. I've been working with that a lot with uh, Tanner and Coach Campbell, just all the fundamentals of being a tight end and um, working at that. So I think generally, just when it comes to um, working on my technique, it's gotten much better. And overall, just in the room, I mean, with some guys hobbled, some guys having switched from other roles to tight end, do you feel like somewhat early in, in your career, you're now one of the almost elder statesmen in the room? And like, <laughs> we, we, we are a pretty young room, you know. Uh, Last year we were young too. We had uh, Darren Fells for a little bit, and he was the older guy. And um, so, 
try and I try and pick up as much as I can from those guys and the same thing this year um, but yeah it's it's all about just uh, kind of growing that football IQ and knowledge from everyone you can and uh, we got a great group though. How important for your growth you know what one do you two have and Ben Johnson elevated he was your position coach having Tanner back you know in that role how, how important is that for you? Oh it's great it's been awesome to work with those guys had a lot of uh, hands-on work with them last year and then of course again this year with Coach Johnson being the OC, um, kind of knowing his style of coaching and then being with Tanner most of last year. Um, so it, it's awesome playing for those guys. Uh, it's tremendously important. Um, at the point of attack a lot, um, involved in uh, heavily in the run game, and so it's a huge part of my game, and uh, it's an area that I try and focus on every single day. Is that you involved in the touchdown? Game. Yes, sir. Can you explain what you did there? A lot of people have described it. <laughs> well, I had a, in your words. I had a slice block there, so I was trying to cut him and get him on the ground, and uh, it didn't work out so well. We call that a plus minus. Um, uh, when it ended up getting a touchdown, so that's the most important thing. What, what made it the plus then? Uh, the touchdown. <laughs> Great running by Swift. <laughs> what, what do you kind of attribute for that comfort from year two? Is it is it just you know? You know the surroundings. Is it the game slowing down for you? Is it, is it something that clicked in the offseason with the blocking? I guess that's a number of all those things. I'd say it's just uh, when it comes to comfort, it's uh, just overall awareness and uh, confidence in your ability, and then um, also just being out there and having experience. I got a great bit of experience last year, and I think that carries over. So now there's a lot of things that maybe I uh, wasn't used to seeing that now I am, and I can um, kind of uh, play things out and unfold it in my head before they happen. That head coach that used to be a tight end. I mean, Dan seems to love the position, and there's talk in there. It, it seems to be a big part of this offense. How much does that help you for you know your prospects going forward and being a contributing part of the 53? Oh, we love it. We love it. It's uh, you know, the more we can get tight ends involved, of course, the happier we are. Uh, having a head coach that was a tight end and a great tight end at that fact. Um, it helps so much to, uh, just kind of grab a knowledge from him. He's always hands on with us and um, helps every single one of us get better every day. How underrated do you feel the receiving part of your game is? I know I think we talked last year, right? Like, you didn't have a lot of, a lot of catching in college, and, but it seems like whenever the ball's going away, you sort of make this move. As a tight end, you got to be ready to do all of it. You know, um, people always say, you know, blocking tight end, receiving tight end, and whatnot. But to be a, a true why, you got to be able to make the plays when the ball comes your way. So. Feel just that that's just as important as going out there and being able to block. What, if anything, did you do to sort of work on that period or even this offseason? Uh, Coach Johnson always says uh, ABC is always be catching. So as much as you can get out there and catch the ball, running routes, it helps. What? Just with, with Funches, he's only been here basically practicing for three weeks now. How much have you seen him kind of grow in just a short amount of time? Oh, a lot. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, funny. He talks about it all the time. Um, uh, the transition into becoming a tight end. You know, he has all these incredible receiving skills, but he's come a long way. He's also a great vet to have in the room, um, as well as just a joy being around. I'm sure y'all have uh, seen him in Budge. He's, he's hilarious, so good guy to have in the room with us. Since you were with Ben as a, as a position coach for a while, what, share your best Ben Johnson story now that he's OC. What's, uh... Uh, I'll just say my favorite quote of his, we actually had it up in the tight end room last year, is uh, have skin of an armadillo. He always talks about to play football, to play tight end, you got to be tough. You got to be able to be willing to take the constructive criticism and move forward. So he always says, have, a, have the skin of an armadillo. I like that being a Texas guy. How is he when it comes to that constructive criticism? Is he honest? Is he oh, yeah. Feedback? Is he play? Oh, yeah. Very, very constructive. Um, you know, he's, he's a, a brilliant football mind. So every time he says something, it's you're, you're gaining a lot of knowledge from him and get better. Right on. Yeah, I think the first thing starts with pad level. You know, for him, that's one of the things that he's working on on a daily basis. Pad level and hand placement are a couple of the things that um, you know we really focus on with him. And if he can continue to get better in that area, I think uh, you know he's got the strength and the size to uh, to become a really good blocking tight end. So as we just as we continue along and and proceed through the preseason and some of these games and stuff, and uh, you know he's getting better every day. So. A slow start to camp for Devin Funches, obviously, with the injury out of the gate. But what did you see out of him kind of making a play in the red zone and even hurdling over somebody showing that athleticism? <laughs> <was a little, laughs> yeah, it was kind of funny. You know, we, uh, we did a hurdling um, drill, ball security drill, the other day in practice. And um, 
uh, you know, in Deuce's station. And so that was kind of funny to see that come to come to light. We'll get him to hold that ball a little bit tighter, you know, coming out of that thing. But, um, you know, he's, uh, he's getting more comfortable every day, you know, and, um, and so it's good to see him have a little bit of production because really, you know, as, as you mentioned, he, ha he hasn't had a lot of targets and maybe production in camp thus far uh, as he's getting accustomed to and feeling it out, being in the box instead of, instead of spread out wide. So uh, it was really good to see him, him do that and, and get down in the red zone. I mean, he can jump out of this, out of this room and he's tall and, and, uh, and athletic and long. And so that was, that was awesome to see him make that play down in the red zone. He, he's come along, you know. First thing we're going to say, is he willing to do it? You know, and yes, absolutely, he's willing to do it. And, and he's working on it every day that, we, uh, that we're out there. So he's, he's coming along um, for those things. It's, uh, it's not for the faint of heart to be in there. And, and he, he does not shy away from contact whatsoever. Is that the, the big separator between, I guess, being an F type tight end and a, a big slot receiver is just occasionally you're going to be asked to do a little bit more in the blocking game? Yeah, I suppose so. Although, take, I mean, take a look at Saint. You know, we asked him to do quite a little bit of blocking as well, um, and he does a great job at that. But, but yeah, I think for him, it's it's really more about being attached to the core of the of the offense next to the O line as opposed to you know being out in a little bit more space. So having to operate in a little bit more uh, tighter area for him, and and mixing it up and being in combinations and, and those types of things. You know, that's the where he's got to he's he's continuing to improve. You know. Mold of right here of the of the type of tight end you want in the room, or do you want a little mix and match of different guys who can do different things? Yeah, I think you want a little bit of a mix and match. You know, you're going to have somebody that may be a jack of all trades. You know, that can do a little bit of all of it. But you got you'd love to have a pass catcher like Hawk that he's actually you know a better blocker than people give him credit for, um, which is awesome. And he's continued to get better uh, this training camp. And then you get you know, a true wide tight end that can, can really hold the point and maybe you can play in some of those bigger personnel groupings. And, um, you know, and I think Coach has mentioned uh, previously as well, you know, it'd be great to have that hybrid that can, can do a little, bit of, a little bit of both, you know, so. How many players have you saw how improved this year? I mean, last year, you know, you dealt with injuries, but you know, what was kind of the emphasis this, this year to kind of last the season? And just what areas have you saw improve? Yeah, I think, Last year, we we're definitely a young group, and as you see, we're still a young group. You know, with guys like Shane and guys like Brock, they're they're still young, and then we've got the the rookies as well. So, out of the, we started with you know nine, including Cabinda. You know, five of those guys were really first or second year players. So it's a young group, um, but I think you've seen strides from players like Brock and Shane. Um, for example, you know, Brock in his pass protection, something that was really an emphasis for him in the offseason, he has gotten significantly better at that. He had five opportunities in the, in the uh, game, three of which were really, you know, versus a, a good rush. And, you know, he's holding his own out there. He's doing a, doing a really nice job. And, and Shane is, is continuing to improve as a, as a blocker and as a receiver in the pass game. You know, he has that background. So he's doing, those guys are really coming along. And the rookies are coming along too. You know, they're, they're acclimated now. They're ready to go. How much time, you know, he's sort of that fullback, mm -hmm. an H back, whatever hybrid. How much time does he spend in your room? Uh, he, he's in our meetings. He, he's in the he's in the tight end room as a as an F, you know, fullback tight end. So he wants we want him to be able to to play on the line of scrimmage and in the backfield. And he's shown in the past that he's capable of doing that stuff. So, but yeah, he's in our room. With uh, Mitchell, he knew coming in that he was going to need some some time to mm -hmm. to continue his rehab. Um, Back at practice, but didn't suit up for the game quite yet. So, what, what is the the coaching points of emphasis with him to make sure that you know his development is keeping up uh, with with most first year players? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, again, he's very attentive in meetings. I think that's one of the one of the things that has separated separated him probably from some other rookies that maybe you know have been around. Is he soaks everything up? He's like a sponge. So, he just he takes all the information that he can get. And he puts it to use. And he's not a, if he makes a mistake, he's not going to make it twice. Um, he gets work after practice, uh, after practice, uh, post practice drills uh, with a little bit of individual work. Maybe it's some pass sets or maybe it's some combinations or something like that. Um, and we're continuing to work him in. You know, so every rep that he gets is, is valuable because he missed all of spring. He didn't get any of those physical reps. And, you know, you get better at football by playing football, right? And so we're going to try to get him going and fast track him. As uh, quickly as as we we can to to get him up to speed. Going back to that fullback role, uh, looks like Garrett 
Griffin is kind of the, the replacement for Kamid Nawali's sideline. How have you evaluated his play at that position so far? Yeah, I mean, I like Garrett a lot. He's done a great job at that position and filling that role. Um, he's he has a natural feel for that on some of those wide zone plays where he might be inserting on somebody or getting up to a safety, and uh, he does he does that really really well. So I, I feel very comfortable with him in that role. Now, a couple of your tight ends, Brock, TJ, attended tight ends. You mm -hmm. this offseason. What value can that add to both their games, like just being around other guys? Yeah, I mean, I think part of part of being a really good player is you've got to learn from other people, and they go down there and they've got. I don't know, what is it, 80 to 100 guys down there that are the best in the world. So how can you not learn something? You go down there and you learn one thing from one of these other best players, call it, I think it's probably worth your while. You know, whether that's a release technique or a separation technique at the top of your route or, hey, I do this with my hand placement in the run game. You know, I don't think there's, I don't, I don't know what the negative would be for those guys to go down there and, and learn from each other, you know, and share their trade secrets, if you will. Yeah. Are you dealing with the camp competition from JT Barrett pushing you for practice quarterback? Yeah, uh, you know, I think JT's coming off of uh, off of that uh, you know injury report, so I think I still might be be ahead there just a little bit. But once he's fully healthy, I got no chance. Not a chance.